Tom, it's your first time on the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I suppose I'd say uh, I've been recently going to the gym, been working out, trying to get uh, big arms, trying to turn my arms into legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also very adept with a hand whisk. Uh, and what else can I tell you? Oh, and I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm gay. Well, I say I'm gay. I hardly find the time. But I... <laughs> Uh, it's a big commitment. <laughs> it's a big commitment, and uh, I do think it's very important to talk about gay issues. Uh, you know, a lot of people come up to me and say, you know, Tom, I didn't know what homophobia was until I met you. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you live with, Tom? Uh, recently, I've been living with a couple. Um, they're called Dad and Mum. And, um, I'm sorry, are you, you, you're serious? You, do you yeah. live with your parents? Yes, Jim, yes, yeah. Do you mind yeah. me asking your age? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, it's on Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> but yes, yes, I do live with them. I don't mind it. It can be stressful, though, uh, sometimes. They, they like to do things they know annoy me, uh, like they like to buy a newspaper that they know I don't like. And they know I don't like it, but yet they'll still leave it out around the house, like they'll leave it out on the buffet. Well, they don't call it a buffet anymore, since <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all bad. Tom, what are you up to? Well, I just Googled Tom's age. <laughs> How old? How old do you think? Well, I know, because I've got it in front of me, and I don't want to give anything away, but it must have been difficult being gay in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you. How would you describe yourself? Uh, still gay. Um, <laughs> um, I would say uh, quite. I think I'm quite camp. Was that fair to say? Uh... <laughs> That's a pretty good description, I would say. Um, Tom, would you describe yourself as a people person? Uh, yes, I love company, but I can't stand other people. Um, <laughs> like recently, I saw a man with a bag for life from Lidl. And you just wish some people believed in themselves a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with Lidl. Nothing wrong with... Nothing with, wrong with Lidl. Lidl. No, nothing. Mm -hmm. Anyway... <laughs> have you ever been in a Lidl? <laughs> no. Are you being serious? <laughs> I haven't been in a Waitrose, mate. Have you not? Where no, do you I... get your vegetables from? I, they're in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your love life. How's it all going? That's a very personal question, actually, Jimmy. Um, but uh, recently I've been dumped. Uh, but it's fine, it's fine. It was a mutual decision um, for him to dump me. <laughs> and, uh, no, we both sort of realised it wasn't working. Uh, unfortunately, we realised at different times. He realised <laughs> some weeks before I realised <laughs> when <laughs> he told me. <laughs> <laughs> But, but it's fine, it's fine. You know, other, you know, good things have been happening. I've got one of these things now, uh, which tells me how my, how my heart's doing. Uh, yes, still broken. Um, <laughs> so, no, no, oh. don't patronise me. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. I come on the show, it's fine, I'm happy. <laughs> Tom, you've, uh, you've kept us up to date with your love life in the past. How's, uh, how's that going? Um, not very well. I've joined some of those dating apps and uh, on one of them recently somebody started a conversation with me by sending me a photograph of their asshole. <laughs> <laughs> what are you supposed to respond to that? <laughs> I put, what an opening. <laughs> <laughs> <Very good. laughs> I'm meeting for dinner next week. I don't know how I'm going to recognise him. <laughs> Tom, have you got a mascot? Well, actually, yes, I do, Jimmy. Um, I've decided to bring along as my mascot, it's a gay rugby team. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Wessex Wyverns. <laughs> This is uh, the Wessex Wyverns gay rugby team. Uh, this Now, this is um, Daniel. He likes cross-stitch. This is Nick. He had an argument recently with his uncle about blue passports. And this is James. He likes playing rugby, and he likes playing older men off of one another. <laughs> I've always wanted to be their mascot, so I thought, what could be better than if I asked them along as my mascot tonight? Um, why, why do you want to be their mascot? 
Um, because my type is officially uh, men who are chunky and kind. <laughs> and I need to feel safe, and also because I am very, very lonely. <laughs> have, you, have you met Tom before? Uh, we've never heard of him before. <laughs> Lonely. <laughs> as a as a rugby team, have you have you got a mascot at the moment? Oh, we do. My niece. Yeah. Well, she's actually not as good as she thinks she is, and uh, she needs to watch herself because that job's got my name written all over it. So all of you can shut up and get off the stage. Actually. <laughs> Go on. Susie, Tom, could they have done any better? Yes, of course. Uh, Horiest. As in oh, most yes. grey. Yes. Oh, most yeah. grey. Right, you're going to have to help me out here, mate. How are you spelling that? H O. <laughs> Do you know, Rob and I went to school together. We were not in the same classes. <laughs> not in the same <laughs> class, actually. You he used don't... to wear a top hat and tails. Shh, yeah. Rob, I don't want everybody to know that. <laughs> Why did you wear a top hat and tails? Well, I thought, you know, it would just be a way of making myself seem eccentric. He looked like a ghost. <laughs> People didn't pick on him because I didn't think he existed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, time to go across to Dictionary Corner. Tom, what have you got for us? Hello, Jimmy. Erotic literature. Now, <laughs> erotic literature is popular with everyone. It appeals to our basis desires. And it's cheaper than buying someone dinner. <laughs> and with all, as with all literature, it's sometimes nicer to read it out loud. Now, if you're reading this at a church group or perhaps on Radio 4, <laughs> you might find that it's nicer to replace the rude words with uh, other words, to make it politer. In this example, from Fifty Shades of Grey, I have replaced the rude words with popular stations on the recently privatised East Coast mainline. <laughs> This is your punishment. So close and yet so far. Is this nice? He breathes in my Stevenage. <laughs> <laughs> I whimper, exhausted, pulling against my Edinburgh Waverley. <laughs> I'm helpless, lost in an erotic Grantham. <laughs> Redford, I beg. And he finally <laughs> takes Durham on me. <laughs> How shall I York you, Anastasia? Oh, my body starts to Dunbar. <laughs> Please, what do you want? Doncaster, now! <laughs> I cry. Shall I York you this way or this way or Wakefield Westgate? <laughs> That's an endless choice, he breathes against my lips. He kneels up between my Hartford loop line. <laughs> Very slowly, he pulls my Finsbury Park off. <laughs> Staring down at me, his eyes gleaming. How nice is this, he says. He raises his eyebrows as his hand moves up and down his impressive Newark Northgate. <laughs> he stares down at me for a moment, measuring my need. Then he grabs me suddenly and flips me London King's Cross. <laughs> it takes me by surprise, and because my hands are tied, I have to support myself on my Berwick-upon-Tweed. <laughs> And from his impressive Peterborough, I instantly Darlington again and again. Mm. <laughs> OK, time to go across to Dictionary Corner. Tom, what have you got for us? Well, Jimmy, now, like so many people here, I love it in the arts. <laughs> <laughs> to be creative is a wonderful thing. This week, I thought I'd use my creative abilities to explain how relationships work, particularly gay relationships, because gay relationships are very popular, particularly with things like gay marriage, or as I like to call it, garage. <laughs> 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 so now what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd act out uh, some scenes from typical gay relationships. Um, and I thought we'd look at first at uh, something that's known in homosexual circles as having a row. <laughs> Luca, have you arranged the Halloween costume for the dog yet? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike, he's going as Princess Leia again. You know it's the perfect look for French pugs. <laughs> Luca, I am not having my child wearing the same costume two years in a row. <laughs> 
don't know what's wrong with you lately. You seem to be spoiling for a row. You didn't even want to come for brunch this morning, and you know how I feel about brunch. <laughs> Mike, calm down. Why don't you listen to your Tina Fey audiobook and relax? <laughs> I can't handle you when you're being like this. Sure, fine, whatever. I'm going upstairs with bossy pants. You can sleep on the mid-century Liberty Print sofa. <laughs> Another thing that people are often curious about is sex. How does it work for you guys? Who's the wife, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe this will clear it up once and for all. Brian, come to bed. What are you doing? Jeff, I just want to dust down the windowsill. Brian, are you coming back to bed now? No, I just want to fold all the towels and then adjust the tie back so they're at matching angles. Brian, why are you always doing this just when we're about to make love? Jeff, it's no big deal. I just want to make sure the curtains are symmetrical, there's a three inch gap between all the ornaments, and the dehumidifier is set to night mode. And that is what we call extreme anal. <laughs> I have a couple of questions off the back of that. Yes, Jimmy, uh, I thought you might. I have the Tina Fey <laughs> audiobook and I have a dehumidifier. Where do I sign up? Um, <laughs> when we get back to the hotel. <laughs> it's finally happening. <laughs> we are recruiting at the moment. <laughs> Without wishing to be extreme anal about the extreme anal, I wondered why the angle of the curtain tiebacks indicated that curtains would be open when they were going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, time to go across Judiciary Corner again. Tom, what have you got for us? Welcome back. Now, um, <laughs> for some people, holding a hand on a hot stove is a great way for them to remind themselves that they're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Are you reaching out to John? Jimmy, how dare you interrupt me? So, do you want to do some sort of badinage then? I don't really enjoy it. Um... <laughs> Coming on the show is absolutely screwing up. My brain just screamed badinage. Is that an anagram of beading? I'll never be normal again. I should look at it. Oh, Susie, is badinage a, an anagram of beading? Hang on, this is yeah. my bit. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I love to go to fancy dress parties. Now, for some people, uh, fancy dress spells fancy stress because they do not know who to go as. Now, in that instance, all I would say is, thank God for Jane Asher. And that's not actually the first time I've said that this week. <laughs> Jane Asher's fancy dress is a Bible for people who love to party. <laughs> but who have too much time on their hands. <laughs> Jane's first suggestion is maybe you'd like to go to a fancy dress party dressed as a soda stream. <laughs> as Jane puts it, transform some strips of polystyrene packaging material into a magical bubbling fountain. Oh, <laughs> so magical. Mmm, get into a passionate embrace with this one and you'll find the popping of bubbles both exciting and stress relieving. <laughs> now, 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 if you don't like that, maybe, you, you know, that feels a bit strange to go dressed as that and you want something that's, uh, I don't know, maybe a bit more fabulous, but also uh, it's great for people who hate the Atkins diet. And this outfit is to go as a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> my oh, mum dressed yes. me up as that. It's so, an egg salad sandwich. My mum has that exact book. And Rachel, this is my bit. <laughs> 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 you just brought back horrible memories Did you go dressed as a salad sandwich? An egg salad sandwich. There, there are photos. Oh, that's nice. So she did it? There's a circus tent in there. She did that one as well. Thank you, Rachel. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that, everybody. <laughs> um, so, if you're still, if you're still not sure, now this one you will find very surprising. Uh, now, <laughs> this final winning, this final winning outfit. I think you're going to like this, Jimmy. If you're not sure, if you're feeling a bit self-conscious about what to go as, maybe you just go as a whacking great <laughs> circus tent. <laughs> Finally, both a winning outfit and a solution to the housing crisis. <laughs> as, as Jane describes it, it is uh, it's perfect. It's perfect for a pregnant lady. <laughs> the sight of someone pregnant is disgusting and must be hidden. <laughs> now, 
remember, <laughs> all, all you need to make these things, all you need to make these things are just 3.5 metres of white sheeting, uh, 7 metres of trimming, uh, 2 garden sticks, 4 paper plates, a sewing machine, a welder, a chainsaw, <laughs> a 5-year textiles degree, a fully equipped workshop and a small factory in Bangladesh. <laughs> Okay, time to go across the literary corner now. Uh, Tom, what have you got for us? Well, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> now, on this occasion, I thought I'd come up with a definition for you, actually, of a modern phenomenon. Uh, and the definition is competitive mourning. Uh, it refers to the modern trend of vying to be the most saddest at the death of a public figure or celebrity. <laughs> now, a few years ago, the world was made aware of the passing of one of its greatest ever leaders. His name was Nelson Mandela and he was loved by people throughout the world. And on the day that he died, I happened to go online and I saw a post from a girl I went to school with. Her name was Denise Cueve. <laughs> <laughs> and when I went on Facebook, I saw her post and it said this, guys, Nelson Mandela has died? <laughs> As though it was her news. <laughs> As though she'd been phoned that morning <laughs> by the Mandela family <laughs> and told, Denise, he's gone. <laughs> we need you to tell the people. <laughs> and Julie, she went online and underneath that she wrote, Rip. Just Rip. <laughs> I think she was trying to write R.I.P., but she just put RIP, all lowercase. I mean, she liked the man, but not enough to hold down the shift key. <laughs> and then underneath that, she wrote, he was a great man. <laughs> I mean, it's the most obvious thing in the world. It's like putting the Queen suits pastels. Everybody knew that Nelson Mandela was a great man. The fact that she felt the need to put it there online suggested to me maybe she had some doubts. <laughs> And then, underneath that, underneath that, she put an emoticon. <laughs> and the emoticon was this. <laughs> Guys, Nelson Mandela has died. Rip, he was a great man. <laughs> and when you take a step back and you think of the sanctimonious, self-important, self-aggrandizement that it takes to go online and put something like that about the great man, Nelson Mandela, I mean, it's narcissism, of course, I clicked like because I didn't want to seem like a racist. <laughs> OK, time to go across that dictionary corner. Tom, what have you got for us? Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> now, I'd like to talk about something that's been ruining a lot of weekends and spare time. That's right, children. <laughs> a lot of my friends insist on having them and they won't stop going on and on and on about them. Some of them even make me hold their newborns. Oh, Tom, support the head, they say. Support the head. Don't give it to me if the head's not screwed on yet. <laughs> and, of course, when children are given to me, they instantly cry because they see the poison in my soul. <laughs> Now, these horrible little monsters, I mean children, sometimes will insist on giving me their pictures and drawings that they've done. So I've decided to use this quiet moment to give them some constructive feedback through the medium of national television. <laughs> now, this first one is from Alastair. Now, Alastair is six years old. There he is. And he has drawn me a picture. It is... Clearly rubbish. <laughs> I know some people will be saying, oh, well, maybe it's a young Picasso. I don't think Picasso ever used PVA glue and pipe cleaners outside of the bedroom. <laughs> and let's have a closer look at those hands, shall we? Have you ever seen hands like that? Why, they're bigger than your mother's head. And I know your mother. She has very dainty hands and a very, very large head. <laughs> for our next one, uh, this is from Cynthia. Cynthia is eight. She likes ponies and daisies and drawing crappy pictures. <laughs> and this next one, I'm reliably informed, is supposed to be a picture of me. <laughs> 
What is it, some sort of taunt by making it out of pasta? You know I can't have carbs before marps. <laughs> and is this supposed to be my immaculately contoured beard? It looks like I've literally rubbed shit in my face. <laughs> She should really have just drawn a face on an egg, shouldn't she? <laughs> Maybe. How did you make that so flirty? <laughs> it's the spring. <laughs> In conclusion... <laughs> In conclusion, children, work harder. <laughs> Don't be so lazy. Uh, what are you even doing after 3 p.m.? I know what you're doing. You're watching Paw Patrol and getting jam on things. It's not good enough. Pick <laughs> up your game. This bullshit will not do. Thank you. Woo!